guys, what's up? This is Scribble Tech, and today we're going to be talking about how to create a Minecraft server. So, to get started, you're going to want to head on over to Minecraft.net, as shown here. So, you're going to want to go to Download section here, and scroll down to Multiplayer Beta Server Software. For Windows, you're just going to want to download this Minecraft server.exe, and then you're going to have to run port forwarding, which we will discuss later on in this video. To start, I'm going to show you how to download the more involved way which is for Mac and Linux. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to download the Minecraft server.jar. So that's all set. We'll minimize that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a... I created a folder here called new server for the win. So you're going to want to just drag your uh, Minecraft server jar into here. Go ahead and replace that one go ahead and arrange that so it's up and nice and neat so minecraft server.jar this now here you can see my finished one and you're going to see a lot of differences there's a lot more folders in the server than the new server so to do that we're going to have to create something called a start.command file we're going to go ahead and open that up in text edit this code will be in the description but if you just want to see what it is first you're going to have this right here. So you're going to want to open this up into text edit and you're going to want to go to f uh, you're going to want to format make plain text and then you're going to want to save copy and paste this. What the 1G is right here is the amount of RAM that you'd like to dedicate to your server. It's recommended that you do at least f uh, 512 megabytes so you just do 512 MB but what is really suggested for a smooth running server that you're going to run more than, uh, I'd say, two people max. If you're going to run more people than two, then I would really suggest upping it to one uh, gig or even more. Uh, you can specify that by megabytes or gigabytes like I am. So once you have this all settled out, you're going to want to save it. So we're going to go to new server for the win. And we're going to call this start dot command. So you're going to save that. And we have start.command. Next, you want to open terminal. From terminal, you're going to want to type in the following command. chmod space a plus x space. And then you're going to want to drag in the I named it star. Let me just fix that. Start.command. You're going to drag that in. And you're just going to hit enter. What that's going to do is going to, because it's going to give it permission to run the script. So, without further ado, now we're going to hit start.command. And it should open up our server. On the first try, it's going to create all the files that you saw before. So it's going to open this. This will show you the log. You can see it's preparing the spawn area, which can take a long time for the first try. So we're going to minimize that while it's doing that. You must keep both of the terminal and the net.minecraft.server.minecraft server open at all times. Otherwise, if you close one or the other, it will close the server. So next, we can go ahead and we can take a look at all the files that were created. Whitelist. Uh, is a list of players that are allowed to enter the server if whitelisting is turned on. Uh, that's basically, let's say you only want two people to be allowed access to the server, even if people discover your IP, only these people will be allowed in. Banned players, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is your server log. Banned IPs, you'd like to IP ban people. And OPs, which is operators, you just add your name into here, and you will basically be an admin on the server, being able to do all commands. So. We also have server properties here. We're just going to go ahead and open this with TextMate first. Or text edit, sorry. So here you can see, you can select a different server IP, PVP, the server port, which will come in handy in just a bit, whitelist, allow flight, spawn monsters online mode, which must be true if you'd like to have an online server, Hellworld, which spawns Nether. You can name your server. 
and spawn animals. All those things take effect in your properties folder. So let's take a look how this is doing. Oh, all done. So before we actually have the server running, we have to do one more thing. So we're going to open up our... So next you're going to want to go to your router. To access your router, you're going to want to type in 192.168.1.1 right here up in that bar. Then it's going to ask you for your router username and password. Go ahead and enter that. Next, you're going to have to port forward. If you want people to be able to connect to your server outside of your home and local area, then you're going to have to do port forwarding. What that is, is you're going to want to type in that port that we saw in that server properties, which is 25565. By default, you can change that if you really want to, but I wouldn't suggest it. Next, you're going to want to type in this as the external and internal port. You want both for the protocol. You don't want to choose any of those. And for the ending to look up, you're going to have to look into your settings. So on Mac, you just want to go to network and you want to take this right here, which is your local IP address. One, it's an ending of 108. So I always have mine change all the time. So we're going to type in 108 and enable that. Just save your settings and you're now port forwarded. Now, for anyone that is going to connect to your server, they're going to connect through the what is my IP, we'll just Google it. So what is my IP, you're going to want to click this one of these links and get your IP address, that is going to be the IP that they're going to uh, connect to. I'm not going to look it up right now because I really don't want you people seeing my IP address right now. Uh, I'm sure you could find it if you really wanted to, but I just don't want to display it out in the open because I do run servers which aren't whitelisted. So that's going to be that part. So we now have our server port forwarded for other people to connect to, and we also have it just regularly set up. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to connect. On Play Multiplayer, you're going to want to type in that IP of your local IP address. When you connect in your house, anyone connected to your network at your house is going to have to use the local IP. Everyone else will use the IP from whatismyip.org or something. So we're in my house where I'm hosting the server. So we're going to go ahead and do our local address. And you just want to hit connect. And that is extreme unluck right here, spawning right there. And you can see we are now hosting a Minecraft server. Uh, it's a bit laggy because I'm running a video and I'm on high graphics settings. That is taking a long time to load. But this is a server, guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. There will be plenty more on Minecraft server moderation and how you can do all that kind of stuff. Show you a quick command to show you. Oh, I didn't give myself OP, so never mind. Uh, but this is how you create a Minecraft server on your computer. Uh, check out some of my other Minecraft videos and other kinds of videos. Uh, check out my website, www.scribbledeck.com, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks, guys.